go for it. Wow, that was new. It was really loud. <laughs> uh, I'm Christine Scherenberg, and I support the uh, as a, a school sector as a school sector lead. And um, I work in Kansas City, Kansas Public Schools, and support the K through 12 PE teachers as an instructional coach. Am I supposed to pick somebody? Yeah, if you don't mind <laughs> okay. talking. About okay, Kelly, go ahead. Hey, um, my name is Kelly Clay. I work at Children's Mercy and this KC Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative um, to support the school sector. Um, I work with Katie. So Katie, you want to introduce yourself? Like Kelly said, I work uh, at Children's Mercy for the Kansas City Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative, and I help support um, some of our different initiatives, one being the KCPA plan, and I support our school sector. Uh, Brooke. Hi, I'm Brooke Jansen. Um, I am with Score One for Health at Kansas City University. Um, and so I run our CHAMPS program, um, which basically is we take our med students and they are trained to be healthy lifestyle coaches to kind of families that we partner with in the community. Um, and we also do a program called Anatomy Academy, where we take groups of med students into fourth and fifth grade classrooms and teach anatomy and healthy lifestyle lessons. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here with us today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull up our agenda really quick and we can go through it and then I'll hand it over to you, Christine. Okay. I always get confused with Teams and Zoom where the share button is. <laughs> so <laughs> bear with me. There it is. Can everyone see my screen? OK, great. Yes. So we've kind of already done the first agenda item, which is welcome and introductions. Um, then we're going to just go over, as a reminder, um, our implementation application. So we have funding through the KCPA plan for our different sectors, and we still have leftover funding in this group. Um, I don't know the exact number, but I know it's over 4,000. Um, and then we will review a potential, or we'll go over a potential application we've been trying to plan, um, which is around CPAP. Uh, as a professional development opportunity. And then um, we would also like to re-engage some of our sector members. We've realized as we don't have a like a clear project or objective right now, we've dwindled down. So we would like to re-engage and ask our sector members what strategy they would like us to focus on moving forward for next year. Um, and then we just have a few other updates that um, we'll go over, I won't read that entire list. <laughs> um, and then we'll ask the group if they have anything they'd like to share. And then as a reminder, our next meeting is Thursday, December 12th at 1 p.m. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I can share a little bit more about the potential implementation project. Really the only update um, is at the state PE convention last week. Um, it sounded like they might do a summer, they do a, a winter workshop for CAPERD. I'm sorry, first CAPERD stands for Kansas Association of Health, Physical Education, Recreation and Dance. Um, and there was a state convention um, and they have a winter workshop and a summer workshop. And for the summer workshop, they talked about combining with Mo Shape. So, my only thought was maybe that's a potential date that we could look at for this um, project. I I don't know if we need, I mean, I feel like we kind of need a timeline before I put it into a, a proposal or, or should I just start working on an implementation project uh, proposal? What do you think? 
I feel like it would be easy to start one. And I mean, again, these implementation projects, the actual application are meant to be difficult. So if we mm -hmm. have the information already available, we can start filling in those line items. Um, before we continue, Brooke, again, this is around professional development opportunities with, uh, I don't know if you know what CPAP is. Do you know what the acronym is for? No, I do not. Okay. So mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to make sure because it took me a while. Oh, to yeah. Acronym. Yeah, it's the Comprehensive School Physical Activity Plan. Um, we're using a lot of acronyms because a lot of these are so long. <laughs> Names are. Um, but yeah, so we want to look at the Comprehensive School Physical Activity Plan. It's one of our strategies in the school sector, and we want to provide um, training opportunities for school, like those who work in schools. So school professionals, we haven't decided if that is just um, PE teachers, because there's a lot of other um, individuals who are able to influence youth health, as I'm sure you're well aware of being in school settings. <laughs> So um, that's kind of our focus and having this opportunity, you said, was it the winter workshop, Christine? Yeah, I didn't even think about that till I said it. Um, there is a winter workshop and I need to just ask the, um, the CAPERD board what, if they've already scheduled it. Um, I would think it's already scheduled because it's usually in February, um, but I can ask. Uh, I. I was thinking oh, you're for the talking summer. Like this yeah, well, summer yeah, it is. Be when, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, summer would be better. Um, and if they're if they're combining with Mo Shape, usually they'll have a theme for the day. But if the if it's already existing and there's different sessions people can choose from, this this could be a session that an administrator and a PE teacher and you know one, two, or three people from a school could come to, even if that's the only thing they participated in. Um, yeah. So I'd like the idea of offering it at the same time. Um, but just need more, I need to get a little more information about um, the, their timeline was not specific and it was in June. So. Yeah, I think if we can align with them and I mean, I'm sure maybe while well, they might already have an agenda scheduled, adding one more potential workshop it wouldn't hurt mm -hmm. to ask, um, especially if we'll be providing the funds for Rhonda to mm -hmm. present. Um, and yeah, even if it's just a few people who come to this one workshop, we talked about the train the trainer kind of method for this. So I think if you could reach out to Capebird and see, um, that would be a great starting point. Yes, I will do that. I did speak with someone who's on the board. Um, it was actually the, maybe she's like the PE coordinator for Olathe for elementary schools. And she also teaches full time. So she was asking more about it because I had invited the elementary teachers to consider that for January 6th. And they already had plans, but she was kind of like, tell me more about CSPAP and which is just shows another generation of um, teachers have moved through because she was um, younger and doesn't remember when Capered was orchestrating a lot of the those workshops. So I was thinking, oh gosh, everyone's already done this. Like this is, everyone already knows about CSPAP, but she was like, no, we don't. So, so there's more of a need than I maybe realized. So. Well, that's great. That's exciting to know. I yeah. mean- yeah. And you bring up a great point, like the younger generations, while a lot of us do know about it, those <laughs> younger generations that are just starting out may not. So, um, yeah. Okay. Well, um, one other thing within that discussion, I know we kind of talked about how do we distribute this information, um, Kelly, um, has been working with Emily Thorpe, who is the school health mm -hmm. initiative for children's mercy, um, office for community impact. And she has offered to help us with spreading that out as well as, um, 
and this will relate to our re-engagement survey. I'll obviously send it to our sector list of those who have already signed up to participate in the sector, but she will, she's also offered to help us with distributing any kind of like, and Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, because you spoke with her, distributing any survey um, for us that we create our like information, I should say, just overall. <laughs> Yeah, she was willing to do that or get us connected with some, you know, her contacts within the schools. So, um, yeah. That would be fantastic. And she can't be at this meeting, but um, she has said she's going to talk to some of her staff um, to see who could join this meeting i know apparently i think in the past people from her team have been here so yeah there was a gentleman and i am blanking on his name i know it starts with a b uh, brian i'm yep. pretty sure it was brian yep i'm pretty sure that she mentioned brian too so um so hopefully then we'll have some other representation from some um children's mercy groups that are you know doing things within schools, so. That'd be wonderful because um, health did come up recently, uh, maybe it was at the state convention, and just how nobody really knows, like like in our district, we need to really do an audit of, of KSDE's model health standards and where are they being taught and how, because it's kind of been left up to the local school district to determine that, but nobody's talking about it. So um, would love to combine a, a, a people that can talk about mm -hmm. the health. And Brooke, it sounds yeah. like you're also involved with that. Yeah. What, what, I mean, schools, what schools do you go into? Um, so for Anatomy Academy, we're currently on the Missouri side um, with Wheatley Elementary and Whittier Elementary. But we kind of focus the fourth through sixth grade. I like that. Anatomy Academy. <laughs> yeah. Kind of rolls my, off the tongue. Yeah. My background actually is in elementary education. I was a fourth grade teacher for six years. So awesome. I kind of have that perspective too, I guess. Well, that's great. No, I, I didn't know that. Um having like different people with experiences in school settings is obviously, as you know, extremely helpful for efforts in this sector. So uh, yeah, if you have any input, please feel free to be like, you're targeting the wrong people or this isn't what we should be focusing <laughs> on. Um, yeah, much appreciated. I, speaking of kind of like um, on that note, we do know like, a lot of people in schools don't really see the benefit of speaking about just physical activity and um, how it doesn't just obviously promote like health and wellness, but it also there's research that shows being physically active helps with like, um, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I'm blanking on what I was going to say, not just mental health, but um, was it? It, uh, attendance. Yeah, there it was. Thank you, Kelly. I was like, you're the one who pulled this up for us. Um, and so Kelly actually had a great idea because that's been a huge issue lately is um, absenteeism. So maybe creating a one pager of how physical activity and opportunities to engage during school time can actually help with increasing um, attendance. And maybe we send that out with the engagement survey. Yeah, I want to add, I mean, that just jogged my memory that another school district we were in touch with about swimming, they said they had, they had done the program through their counselor because they were looking for anything to encourage that would make kids want to come. And that's how they did. That's why they did their swimming pilot with their um, second graders. So the video, Kelly, you, did you send that video out? Yeah. Okay. That was so cool and i think that would resonate with 
all of our schools. I talked to someone at the convention. They, they literally have like a recess time for their middle schoolers. Um, so there's some unique, there's buildings that are doing unique things. It's just, I need them to yeah. give us all yeah. that information. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the one pager I think would definitely be helpful just making those basic connections when that's not necessarily top of mind for everyone, you know, when they're going about their day working on a lot of things within schools. So, um, and I think physical activity, um, often is like a low barrier, low cost, um, changes that can be made. Not always, but like in a lot of senses it, it is, you know, so. Okay. Uh, moving on to re the re-engagement survey. Were we going to look at that like on your screen, Katie? Well, we can. I mean, do you think that's a good use of our time to review it one more time? I mean, um, did we already do that? I know you and Kelly Just, did. So I feel happy enough with it, but yeah. I can bring it up yeah. and we can review it really quick if we wanted to. Let me find it. Because I don't have it created in Qualtrics yet. I just did it through a Word document. Okay, got it. I mean, I'm I'm fine with what we have. Okay, well, if that's the case, we can just move on. I don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm well. If that's the case, then we're on to other updates. And I know you had said that you might have some more information to sh share from the Capered State Convention. Um, yes, I was hoping to prepare something for that today, and the uh, swim pilot had some. Adjustments. Um, I can say um, hmm. well, I can mention that um, have you guys have you heard of uh, it's Drumpet? There's I guess it they shared a, a session on like exercise balls with drumsticks and it sounds like Kansas is about to have, like maybe they're receiving grant funds. So next year they're inviting people to get certified as a teacher for the community, not, not just in school systems. The, um, the person who led, she is retired from the middle school and she is teaching adults at night. And so she did the drum fit with us. Let me see. Should have it right. Drums alive. Sorry, we've had different versions, but um, so drums alive training in Kansas. There is a. Um, I'll have to maybe give it to you to send out in the next newsletter. There's an interest form that people can do a QR code about being selected as a trainer, and they're just trying to increase the opportunities for adults of all ages. So that was well, one I, interesting thing. I've never heard of it, so. Yeah. And drums are mm. like, so are they just like using the exercise ball as like a, like a bass drum pretty much? That's cool. Yeah, we're just using the drum. And then there was a couple other implements. Um, Oh, I forgot the name. They use it in music classes. Uh, it's like hollow and it's plastic. Anyway, there were a couple of things inside our, um, the, the ball is sitting on like a bucket. And so inside the bucket, there were all the different um, 
pieces of equipment that we used during the session, including an egg shaker. So there was, it was, it was fun. Um, there was also a great session about adaptive physical education and just the state of Kansas. Um, it sounds like they're that the state of Kansas did away with adapted um, programming in teacher prep programs for physical educators. And so there was, there's a, um, the professor who led this session, she is coming from Pennsylvania where she said there's amazing resources and support for adaptive physical educators. And so she, I think is kind of creating an advocacy piece to kind of fight against getting rid of that piece um, for incoming teachers. So I'm not sure um, there was a survey and maybe I can also send you that link um, in case any um, people are involved with um, providing adaptive services or physical education. It just asked um, questions about like what environment and how many classes and, you know, just getting, getting data to, to say that we need to keep adaptive physical educators and we need to keep those courses in teacher prep programs. So, um, and grant opportunities. I probably, I need to send, okay. So there's some things I need to send you it's all right here. <laughs> Cause we did, st I stumbled up just peaceful, peaceful playgrounds sends monthly updates and they have a very long list of grants for whether it's related to guard, um, you know, guard, like food, what do they call that? Like when you're just, when there's a school garden and they're trying to get um, locally grown uh, fruits and vegetables to playground, um, anything to impact after school activities, sports, PE, health, all of those were topics. Um, so, We just don't have a grant person that can sit and weed through it all. That's the hard part because there's all these yeah. great opportunities. Like you had said, I mean, I'm such an advocate for school-based gardens because there's so much you can do with them. Mm -hmm. um, on the Missouri side there, I think it was Hogan. Oh my, pretty sure it was Hogan who has a garden and they call it their grieving garden. So they actually use it for therapeutic purposes in addition to nutrition um, kind of based, yeah, teachings. So I thought that that multi-use was very interesting um, because where that school was located, they um, a lot of the students there have witnessed loss. And so it was like an alternative kind of activity to kind of process their emotions and um, go through the grieving process through gardening. And I, yeah. And it's unfortunate that schools lack the resources to be able to, as you said, you don't have a grant writer to sift through these and there's just not enough people to be able to jump in and assist to get these kinds of initiatives going. But yeah, if you want to send me the list, I'd love to sift through yeah. it in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting what you shared because um, I don't know if grounding is like a new thing, but I've been reading up on grounding and just like your feet being present, like on the actual ground earth, not just in your shoes and like the benefits for your body and it was it linked it to gardening as well it was like oh and this also counts if you're handling soil that that is spending time grounding so i'm sure that there's a direct link to what you're talking about to mental health and processing different trauma yeah. and yeah, seeing something like you've nurtured I, and grown and like started off small and seeing that, yeah, there's a lot. I love, love that idea. Um, 
when you said grounding though, I thought about like being a child and getting grounded. So I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, how's that well, a good thing, Christine? <laughs> <laughs> they sell okay they, i just saw of course probably through instagram they sell grounding like a sheet that you can um put on your uh and your bed and it plugs into the grounded to the outlet not where you put in i guess i never noticed that when you plug in a plug if it's a two prong the third prong is a grounding prong and so mm -hmm. this Thanks. sheet just has like a little snap that goes only to that outlet. And so I guess time spent on the sheet, at least if there's any skin contact, is also receiving the benefits of grounding. Let's just give you better sleep. <laughs> That's interesting. I know. <laughs> anyway. Um, I don't have anything else. If you no. Have okay. anyone have leads on um, co-lead? Let me know. Yeah, so we are still looking for a sector co-lead. Um, I can't remember if I asked that question in the survey. I know we are um, doing a public health re-engagement survey as well, just because since Joey stepped down, so we're actually asking for nominations. Maybe I can include that a question in our school engagement, re-engagement survey as well, just to kind of get some feelers out there if anybody would like to step in and assist. I was just, I will check, make a note for myself here. Um, the teachers, there's teachers that I have, if they have a plan at one o'clock, um, since this is just a once a month, there's a few that I would love to invite. So I'll yeah, check and see who has one o'clock plan. Yeah, mm -hmm. it also comes with a stipend, as you know. So yeah. awesome. I think that's the hard part for people in schools is that you know they're all teaching during the day. Yeah, but, it's that time. It's just it's yeah. difficult to. Yeah where do like we've had this issue with the mocan schools group right now um is the like there's not really a perfect time because those who work in schools are working throughout the day and teaching classes or um it's just hard and after school's done a lot of them have um other responsibilities whether it's um you know coaching or doing bus drop or bus pickup. Mm -hmm. I, if I got the name wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's been no. a minute since I've been in school <laughs> or, you know, dismissal. You mean dismiss yeah. dismissal? Yeah. Yeah. Bus dismissal yeah. is like drop off, pick up. <laughs> so we understand, um, just do the best we can. Well, um, we can go ahead and do group updates if you want. I know I've got one to share from the Kansas City Healthy Lifestyles Collaborative, and that is the fact that we do have a quarterly meeting coming up. So Dr. Chelsea Crash, um, she is an assistant professor in the Division of Physical Activity and Weight Management in the Department of Internal Medicine at uh, the University of Kansas Medical Center. She focuses on children between three and five specifically. I think it's three and five, not three and four. And um, 24 hour physical, um, not just physical activity, 24 hour movement behaviors. So that's physical activity, sedentary, and then sleep. Um, so she's actually presenting December 5th and the title is 24 hour movement behaviors in early childhood. Um, this is at the Kaufman Foundation Conference Center. Again, it's free. Um, if you have students who want to attend, so you can invite them. Um, I'll be dropping the registration link in just a second. We do offer breakfast as well. Um, and it's from nine to 11. Don't think I forgot anything. <laughs> but, you would like to register. Oh, thanks, Kelly. 
I'm also glad you did it because I I about put in the wrong link. I was gonna do the one for the next meeting. <laughs> um so speaking of gardening, I'm a little tired and brain scattered because I actually closed the Children's Mercy Community Garden this morning. I was helping with that. So that's why I'm a little off my game. I'm sorry. It was a lot of work. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any group updates that they would like to share? I'm going to just open a question to Brooke or Christine because I got a email this morning asking about um, North KC High School is looking for presenters for their health and wellness class for ninth graders. Um, they particularly are interested in um, nutrition, teen nutrition, and um, mental health. And I told them that internal, like our team can't provide something like that, but I figured that we might as well put it out to the group to see if either of you guys are, know anyone who would be interested in doing something like that um, or have a group in mind that could provide that for them. There would probably definitely be some KCU med students that would be interested in that. Um, if you want to share my email with whoever I can kind of direct them, I'll put it in the chat. Perfect. And our, since we are just offering health as a semester for the first year, um, our teachers are working on the same thing, identifying guests. I think that they collaborated with the school's counselor and nurse. Um, so I wonder who reached out to you specifically, if it was like the PE health teacher or if they were working in with their building already. I think it trickled down to me um, because it mm -hmm. wasn't directly from North KC. It was from another person at Children's Mercy. Oh. And so then... So I yeah. can look back at the email and try yeah. and see if where in the chain. Um, yeah. But yeah, because I wonder if they already have got some assistance through their, it's like one high school, their um, mm -hmm. counselor and their nurse often have connections. And the other one our teachers are using in Wyandotte County is just the health department um, because they, so I'm not sure on the Missouri side um, if their local health department is already supporting them. Yeah, I think they would be Clay County, right north uh, of the river. Is that correct? Because they might, the health department might be able to, even, we had put on some health fairs in collaboration with the health department and they okay. connected like 15 community partners and several of those would have been, would I bet would be willing to schedule as guests. Okay. Perfect. Kelly, I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Are they specifically looking for um, how nutrition and mental health go together? Or are they are those like two different topics? Okay, have two you topics. have they reached out to anybody in the Illuminate program at Children's Mercy? Um, I'm not sure, but that's a good vibe. Yeah, because I know we had two guest speakers um, for our Just Walk events last year at Harris Park. Um, okay. One was Dr. Dana Bakula. I probably butchered that last name and I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but she spoke about um, the importance of taking care of one's own mental health as a caregiver, but I know we had somebody else who spoke specifically about youth mental health. Um, mm -hmm. And they were both with the Illuminate program. Okay. And then if you want nutrition, um, potential nutrition guest speakers, I'd reach out to Shelly because she I thought knows about that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, great. Well, thank you guys. Um, I saw that this morning and I was like, well, I'm just going to hold on to that for this <laughs> meeting today. So um, is that is that email uh, in the chat? 
Oh, that's Brooks. Okay. Brooks. I was thinking that was the person that was asking, but okay. Well, I wrote your email down anyway, Brooke and Case. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you guys. Trying to think if there's anything else from our team that we would want to share at this time. I have a question. Um, yeah. The it came out of the project play, but um, the sports play. I don't know if it's sports play equity coalition. Um, I know that I think Bill's mm -hmm. sector or his the board is working on something like that. Is that is the Kansas City Healthy Lifestyles collab is the collaborative as a whole addressing some of those um, things that came out of the report or is that specifically being carried by the sports sector? Kelly, go for it. Um, I think it sounds like primarily the sports sector will lead that work. However, there's a lot of crossover with particularly the school sector. So I could anticipate them reaching out to us once they find a focus of where, what kind of steps they're taking next. Um, I don't think it's fully identified. One that they talked about a little bit back was um, related to coaches and specific kind of like training levels or like um uh i don't know like a system where they got grades for level of coaching level of like training um so i'm not sure if they're going to move forward with that or there are a couple other recommendations that they talked about um but I'll, there's a lot of overlap with the school sector. So I could see them. Um, they've already talked about asking us to help with that or so. Um, yeah. That makes sense. I know I, I did attend like one meeting recently. I just, um, because my focus during the day, um, I have, 60 teachers that I'm trying to support. I felt like I couldn't be a part of the board um, to, to really get into the nitty gritty and help. I think they're doing a lot of forming. Mm -hmm. So, but if there's stuff that the schools, if, yeah, if there's partnership between the two sectors. Happy to help with that because they, yeah, they talked a lot about like, um stuff resources for parents or um, seminars for parents or coaches and there I think there's a lot of stuff out there it's just kind of can making this network and connecting um so um Christine by chance speaking of the sports sector um has Natalie reached out to you about Lee uh Lani Ridwell? No? Okay. So, uh... Oh, me? I don't know. The name sounds slightly familiar. Tell me more. <laughs> so, um, she is working to... She wants to help support a girls basketball um, team within a school that's struggling to keep it going, the program itself. Um, oh so she gosh. wants to work on changing district policy related to coaches to improve sport experience for kids. Um, Kelly, was this kind of what you were also talking about? Yeah, that's who okay. so she works. She's a coach at Lincoln um, on the Missouri side. And um, or she's not a coach at Lincoln because she's not a teacher. And in the Missouri public mm -hmm. school system, you have to be a teacher to be a coach. Oh. So that's the policy I believe oh. I think mm. that's how I read it that's the policy mm -hmm. that she was looking to try and change 
um, to help support those students. And then there was also a question of maybe funding for gear and, you know, up, yeah. updated jerseys and whatever else. Um, so the, the grants, one of the grants that I will send um, Katie in the list, one was specifically for sports equipment and gear. And it, the amount was like, I don't know, anywhere between 100 and $500,000. So some of those might fit. And I think in KCK, we have what's called a rule 10 coach, which means they're not in the building or they're not a teacher. And so I wonder if, I don't know, maybe I need to look up like more information on what that is. Since I'm not dealing with um, after school stuff, I don't know what rule 10 means or how KCK has it, but um, KC Mo doesn't. Like I understand the benefit of having a teacher be in the building, um, but when, you, when you're having trouble finding coaches, if you have someone willing that's outside, I definitely support that mm -hmm. process of trying to, because our, this just, when you said basketball, just last week, um, a teacher was sharing about her basketball team and possibly not having enough to, to fill the three. They, they could have a potentially three teams and they had the adults and they just needed the students willing to come and learn so now over a kit sd500 can you guys have coaches outside of teaching staff mm -hmm. yeah that was what i was talking about it's called okay. rule 10 coach okay. a rule 10 coach so oh. um that was my question for the person you mentioned was um casey mo like what's the process of approve you know getting a rule 10 coach yeah yeah mm -hmm. I wonder I I could see that fitting within our the kind of the policy side fitting within our mm -hmm. our sector supporting that so yeah. um well Katie should we try and reach out again what do you think because I, yeah, I, I don't know if, like, it was lost in translation, that email, or ask her to come to the next meeting. Yeah, I can do that. I have um, her email address. I just, so when Natalie um, messaged me about this, she didn't introduce me. So that's why I was just, like, connect with Christine. So that's why I wasn't sure. Um, I'll probably just reach out be like, hey, I work with Natalie, and I know... I don't know if it was through Bill that yeah. she was introduced. Just be like, if you can come to our December 12th meeting, we'd love to hear more and see how we can help. Cool. Um, yeah. you know. Well, I have one more thing to share and it's kind of in relation, um, maybe as an opportunity, but more for a kid. So um, Aspen has a micro grant opportunity for high school students. It's service learning through sports. Do you know about this, Christine? Okay. Yes, I've so. I've lifted it to the the group that helps with like the work based learning, the real world learning, all the like diploma plus, and I just um, I know that everyone's busy helping kids get internships and doing other things. And so I didn't receive, really good on paper. Yeah, I know. And I didn't receive a response. And so I was just kind of like trying to think of all the reasons why um, there's a couple things that I've been, that I think are valuable for that. There's kids out there. Same with the wishing. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of women in sports helping the next generation. I don't know if you've heard of wishing but it's I don't think I've heard of wishing. mentor mentorships for juniors and senior women. Um, yeah, across the nation. Anyway, I just trying to figure out how this area can receive attention 
in that department that's focused on getting students um, market value assets and those diploma plus anything when they graduate that's an extra thing on there um, is considered like that plus so this to me when you sent it to me I was like yes and tried to get it to the right person and so I just need to probably follow up because it sounds sounds good to me um, so, Brooke, so you know what we're talking about. I'll go ahead and read what it is. Um, it's Service Learning Through Sports is a one-year program that will identify and support a st small number of U.S. high school students who lead or aim to lead a project or initiative that addresses an issue in sport in their community. So the um, individuals who are selected will receive a micro-grant and a mentorship um program to support their project and develop them as future service leaders. So it's $2,000 for micro grant. They also um, will be um, supported for a one day learning retreat at Project Play, their summit. And then they'll have ongoing peer mentorship and guidance throughout the year period. So they'll receive feedback and support for their project itself. Um, but the deadline to apply is December 1st. So that is coming up. <laughs> I did not know that. Um, but yeah, pretty good opportunity. I feel like I wish we knew how to get the information out to more school districts to see if there were any students interested. That's, I can add that to my to-do. I... Um... I pretty much passed it on and tried to like follow up within here, but I can get that out too because they have a very active like real world learning and showing mission. And um, I mean, really across the city, I think everybody is interested. So just because I didn't hear back from you, mine, I can pass that on. That's cool. I mean, I yeah, if that. you, you've got that's okay. You will do so much. So <laughs> definitely understand. On. Um, I did forward you the email and Bill just sent me as a refresher to myself. Mm. So there is a Word document attached that you can go ahead and send plus the information in the body of the email. So um, yeah. Cool. I think that's all I had to share. I don't have anything okay. more. Well, um, that's okay. So our next meeting is Thursday, December 12th. Um, I'll post the registration in the chat. Actually, I should check. Christine, are you going to be available on the 12th? Or are you going to be celebrating the holiday? Okay. I know some people take oh. like a couple weeks <laughs> off. <No. so. laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on till the 20th. So, okay. Great. Yes. Well, I'll post this registration. You should have it on your calendar, but I will go ahead yeah. and I'll invite Lani. Did I say, does that sound, it's L-A, capital L, lowercase a, capital Lene. Lene. I am terrible at name. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, <laughs> just that not my forte. Ms. Lene. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to remember that. So when we do meet here, I don't butcher it. <laughs> But I'll invite her to the meeting. Perfect. So, well, now that my cherry tomato face from embarrassment is recorded, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Thanks.